Hello, welcome to Teaching Basics 101. My name is Subin Chun, and I'm currently a teacher, high school teacher at Junction City High School teaching chemistry. So today I'm going to be talking about lesson planning. So a lesson plan is essentially a roadmap in which you are mapping out for the students in how they are going to learn and how effectively you are going to teach them. And then from there on, you're going to be designing the appropriate learning activities and also strategies so that you can get, you can get feedback so that you can enhance your teaching. There are a couple essential components that I believe that will help you when you are developing your lesson planning. So first of all, there is the learning objectives that is essential to it. And then learning activities, which include three major practices, which are either guided practices, collaborative practices, independent practices, and those make up your learning activities that your students will learn on based on the style or the environment that your classroom is, is going to be in. And then last, the assessment part is going to be essential to your lesson planning. One thing that I want to point out though is that an effective lesson plan does not mean everything goes by everything that you have planned. It is more about you being able to learn as your audience, uh, your students learn together as well and then you're able to have that valuable feedback and able to be flexible with your students. And that is the biggest part about an effective lesson planning. So let's go into learning objectives. There are four parts to this that you need to keep in mind. First of all, you want to clearly state your tasks. You do not want to use complex vocabs because that can overwhelm your classroom and sometimes it will be difficult for the class to understand what is going to be happening in the classroom. So you want to keep it simple and not too vague though. Now, the next part, important learning goals. It is a part where your essential learning to the course is going to be stated out so you want to state that out so that everybody knows what your goal is for this lesson plan and then the next part is that you want to make that goal achievable and measurable so consider how much time do you have in that class are you allowed to use this amount of time in this section and then this amount of time in the other one because you don't want to end up running out of time or having too much time left over in your lesson and then the resources that you have so that the achievements that you can get from the students are able to have that quality, um, quality achievement that you want from them uh, that you can observe. Bloom's taxonomy of educational um, objectives are, uh, it's, it's an extremely useful resource for um, being able to craft your uh, learning environments that your student that that your students achievements can be measured and demonstrated also the last important part of learning objectives is to be able to link to the state standards along with your local standards and within your district because without those your lesson plan is not complete so the next part essential to our lesson planning is our learning activities so like I mentioned before, the three primary activities are guided practices, collaborative practices, and independent practices. Now, guided practice would be usually used initially in the beginning part phase of your teaching of your lesson plan because it involves you as an instructor to be directly involved with the students so that you can guide their learning and those activities will be geared towards that. And then we also have collaborative, which is a furthermore a step ahead of the guided practice in which after that guided practice, you allow your students as partners or groups to have shared discussions and then come up with an activity that involves that collaborative practice. Then when these all have been done, you can then put in a learning activities in, term, in terms of independent practices, which then allows each individual student to be able to show their mastery of that objective that you were trying to get the students to learn. So these are the three essentials of those learning activities that kind of are right there and you can branch away 
If you look over um, on at all these resources, you'll be able to find so many numerous activities out there that can help you in terms of these learning activities. Hi everyone, Dr. Lori Levine here from Kansas State University. I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you for being interested in the teaching profession and thank you for all you are doing to serve students and your community. If you don't yet have your bachelor's degree in education and you're seeking teacher licensure, I would invite you to check out our Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education online degree. This is a powerful, fully accredited program taught by faculty at Kansas State University. This online program is available to anyone in all 50 states as well as internationally. We make transferring credits into Key State easy, and we have a number of generous scholarships, grants, and financial aid available. We pride ourselves on teaching strong pedagogical practices, having close relationships with our students, and peer support as you start your teaching career. You can check out more information about our award-winning program by visiting the website listed below. Thank you. The last part that is always critical to lesson planning is it needs to involve assessments, some way of demonstrating the student's learning. A quick assessment, it can either be a summative or a formative, or it can be in a form of a higher level of assessment in terms of one-pagers or diagram, using note-taking into another level. Not just busy work, but something that you can utilize that they can easily be assessed. Again, you do have to consider the fact that they have to be measurable so that you can document and keep track of their learning. So those are the important parts of the lesson planning. Now, I also want to talk about several things that you may be hit by in terms of a curve. So I mentioned that lesson planning is like a roadmap to your destination that you're trying to get. There are always bound to be traffic, there are bound to be detours, road work, accidents. Classroom is the same exact way. Things will never end up going the way you exactly want it. But as a driver, just because there are these incidents on the road, you don't just stop and just turn around. Usually you have to be patient and wait and, guess, and then make your way through or find a way to go around it. There are certain times that you will end up in situations because let's say there was a fire drill or there was an incident that your class had to be on a lockdown. So you may end up with a lack of time within class periods. What do you do with this? So how I like to describe it when you don't have enough time and you still need to teach the students what you need to. Imagine yourself as a chef. If you're a chef, Cooking is your thing. As a teacher, teaching is our thing. So when a chef is preparing a meal, let's talk about fancy meal, like a 12 course meal that starts with a hors d'oeuvre, a muse bouche, and then a soup, salad. We go the fish, we are our first meal, first entree, palate cleanser, second meal, and then we go into our dessert and etc. We look at a 12 course meal, but Imagine if your customers that are coming up to you don't have enough time to eat all these 12 course meal. You as a chef, you know your meal. You want to show them the very best of your cooking. So you hit them with your favorites, the essentials like the appetizers to clean up and open up your palate and then bring out that first entree and then the second entree and then end them with one of your best desserts. That is what you're going to be doing with your lesson plan. You have all these things planned out, but ultimately at the end, if you don't have enough time, you know your content the best, which means you can cut down to the core ideas on what you need to teach. And that is how you reduce your lesson planning when it comes to these situations. And you can teach effectively what you want to from that lesson plan. Next part, sub plans. Inevitably, you are going to end up with times where you're not going to be able to be in the classroom and you have to leave substitute plans. In those cases, from personal experience, I tend to like to leave lesson plans that are direct, but not too complex because the substitute teachers that come into your classroom, they may not be the expert of the content that you are teaching. 
So you don't want to leave them anything too complex in which they have no idea to how to even deliver it. So you want to keep it very concise and easy for them to understand and deliver. So subplans, it's inevitable. It's good to plan for those, but it also gives you an idea how to plan out your skeletal structure of your lesson plan on figuring out what the critical points are to teach your students. And that is how you can plan an effective lesson plan. Thank you so much for coming and listening and hope all these tips helped. Thank you.